Turn around seven times. And if you pray all night, God, God, your prayers don't only connect with him if he already said it. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Prayer is not going to make God change his mind about your eternal destiny. Yeah. Do you all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I have prayer, yeah, and I pray as much or more than anybody in here, but prayer does not change God's mind about me. Prayer keeps me connected to what God is doing. If, I, if you ask anything, he said, according to my will, then I will hear you. So I got to know his will for me before I can act. I can't ask him for something that's not in the will. How do I know the will of God? The Holy Spirit reveals to me those things that God has given me. You're already Bible, right? So when I get a promise, that's his will. I'm preaching too good for y'all not to respond. When I get a promise from God, that's his will for me. That's what he's given me, Sandra. It don't look like it right now. It don't feel like it right now. But that's why I have what? Hope. Because my hope anchors me into that promise. So when, like I told you last week, when the storm comes, they take the ship out a little bit, as I know, as I remember, and they anchor the ship. So no matter how the storm rages, it might break up, but the ship will stay where the, where the anchor is. So no matter what storm rages in my life today, I have to stay anchored in my hope. Amen. If God said it, He's gonna do it. You can talk about me if you want to, but if God said it, He's gonna do it. It can look like I'm losing all you all, 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 to me, all, all, all you all, you might think I'm losing, but if God said it, I have to stay anchored into Him with my hope. An earnest expectation, a joyful anticipation. If God said it, what's that mean? Promise. Anybody in here believe in promise? Amen. Hallelujah. Shut up! If she, <laughs> Hallelujah. For y'all who listen today, we don't really do the church stuff. Amen. We we trying to get you the way you can prosper and where you can live. Amen. And everything about your life is already finished. Amen. The works are finished from the foundations of the work. God is not making this up as He go along. He's going to look at you and say, oh, you should have went to that club last night. I'm taking it back. <laughs> I'd rather he rather you rejoice at the club and be a light for him and have a good time and let people know I belong to him. Yeah, amen. Yeah. I don't know if some of you are on the side. Y'all just wait till the church over here. Don't even know. <laughs> he would rather you rejoice in who you are. Yeah. He's not making up a plan concerning your life as you move. Yeah. It's already finished. Because if you want to be honest, if you had control, you wouldn't be here this morning. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be here this morning. Yes. I'd be somewhere in Hawaii texting y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good time. You turn the songs up to 51. I'm talking to you when I get back. <laughs> but here's the deal, gentlemen, love. On this great dispensation, on this journey, the Bible says the works are finished from the foundation of the world. If you say it, say amen. amen. The power of Christ is right now resting on you. You are faultless before the presence of God. God help me to preach this this morning. Because Jesus presented you as faultless. Not the church people. Get that straight. Not the people you live with. Amen. Get that straight. He presented you faultless before him. So while we judge you, and the people in your house punish all your faults, before him you have no fault. Amen. If you don't get this, you can't live by faith. Because you'll keep being condemned over your humanity. Come on. And every time your humanity kicked up, you'll feel like you failed God. But God's not dealing with you based on what you can do. He's dealing with you based on what you've already done. So when, when, when he makes me a promise, I don't have to qualify. I don't got to change anything that I do. I don't have to change my lifestyle. I don't got to change the way I dress. I don't got to change nothing that I do just because you think I should. Amen. I don't know if I came to the right church, but I'm going to keep preaching it. So now, Sandra, I'm living in this dispensation. That's why I'm so excited about life. Because I know that what is promised me is coming. Amen. But what do I do till the fullness of time to come? The Bible calls it, here's yeah, 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 what God told um, um, uh, Abraham. You all remember Abraham, right? Yeah. God said, I'm going to give you a child. Ten years later, he didn't have the child. He came up with his own plan. Some of y'all are getting me that right now. He got his own plan and let his lady have the child. Then 20 years, 15 years later, God came back and said, now nah, I'm going to give you what I promised you. You remember that story? Yeah. So what Abraham's strength was, the Bible said he against hope, believed in hope, mm -hmm. based on what had been spoken. So when God makes you a promise, that thing is conceived in you. Uh -huh. And you all walk with me here? Yeah. Nobody can stop that from happening, uh -huh. not even you. Uh -huh. But here's the deal, though. What do you do while you're waiting for it? That's where the church needs to focus on, but us a little bit more. What do you do while you're waiting for that thing that don't look like it's coming? Right, you wait I'm getting there. I'm you happy. Listen, you don't, you don't set your, your time. You don't determine when it's coming. 
The prophet has told you 30 days. You had all these things that happened. What do you do when it looks like God failed you? Uh, that's a good one. Oh, that was right? What do you do when you waited for the promise? You gave your time. You sowed your seed. You served the ministry. You tried to obey the pastor. That ain't a lot of y'all here. You tried to obey the pastor. What do you do when you expect it? You have this hope. The Bible says hope deferred, making the heart go sick. What do you do when you're hopeful and it still don't happen? Come on, Apostle, that's good. I don't know what's up with this system this morning. Are we here? Yeah. What do you do when you feel like you've done everything? You carry this baby. You go to the doctor every time. Nine months come and the baby ain't coming. You begin to be afraid. Is it going to die? Am I going to ever give birth to this thing? Do I need help getting it up? What do you do when you get this promise from God? And you waited, and you fasted, and you prayed, and you gave, and you served, and it don't come here. You go back to the foundation of your relationship, to everything there's a season. Yes. And there's a time, and there's a purpose under heaven. Now, is God a weakling? No. No. So if he said a time to your life, can you change it? No. Can the devil change it? No. Can the witch change it? No. So then why are we concerned? Why are we not praising him? Why are we not hopeful when things don't look the way we think they should look? It's an eternal journey, y'all. Rejoice. Amen. Enjoy your life. Amen. Give him praise. Yes. Do the things you like to do. Don't listen to the church folk. Go to enjoy your life. Yes. Somebody say amen to this. Amen. Rejoice. Enjoy your life. Stand up. Be counted. Glory to God. But don't allow yourself to be oppressed and depressed. Amen. It's a trick of the enemy uh -huh. to get you to be oppressed. He wants you to be oppressed. Yes. He wants you to be depressed. He wants you to be sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. Y'all pray for me. Thank God I'm saved. I ain't going off on the shelf. Somebody say amen. 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 Somebody say amen. Amen. So here's the deal. What, what God told me said, listen, tell Jeremy love. That the time of birthing has come. Amen. You have been, listen, you have been faithful. Yes. You have been waiting. You have not quit. But now that the time of birthing is before you, and it looks like more than any other time, it can't happen. Hallelujah. Is it better? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like more than anything else that it can't happen. What do you do now? Women, what do you do when you're in that third trimester? Bush. <laughs> oh God, I almost said something. What do you do when there's a couple of weeks left and you're watching that calendar and a baby kicking you and turning around your stomach and you're grouchy and you're miserable and you're cussing everybody out, particularly the one who got you pregnant. Someone say amen. You talk about him like a dog. Someone say amen. But, but, but it's because you're about to give birth though. It's because the time has come for you to give birth. And right now, it's time for your harvest. Amen. I struggle with God with this this morning. I don't like telling people this kind of stuff after all these years of ministry. I'm forced to do this. It's time for your harvest. Amen. You have to understand it's time to get birth. Yes. And it's because it's time to get birth, all hell breaks right loose in your relationships. Hallelujah. Let me talk to people on the honest. Go ahead. Amen. Oh, bless the Lord. I know your relationship is perfect. Yeah. You all smile at each other every morning and say, Lord, lady, I love you. I know you have. When, 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 you, when you toast the, the bread, she water it for you. I know y'all do all the kind of thing. It ain't like that to me. Right now, I'm about to give birth to international stuff. Come on, and all hell has broke loose in my house. So much, amen. I know, I know that don't happen to y'all because y'all pray all the time. But all hell has broke loose in my house. Anybody else want to be honest about it? You can't figure out what the heck is going on. You don't know why they're acting the way they're acting. They don't know why you acting the way you're acting. So all, everybody in disarray, y'all ain't saying nothing. But that's because you're about to get burned. Yes. Your money ain't got funny. You've been paying your bills all the while. Now all of a sudden, bills late. You can't know where the money's going. Uh, you ain't giving it to church, so you're spending somewhere. <laughs> but you're about to get burned. Ain't nobody get happy about that. Amen. When the time to give birth, all hell breaks loose. Yeah. Trouble is everywhere. Yes. Confusion is everywhere. Yes. People you 